Okay. I think we are now live streaming in YouTube, so you can start when when you like. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, welcome everybody uh, to this uh, new session of Urban Drainage. I'm Jose Carrillo from the uh, organization committee of this Congress. And uh, let me introduce you uh, the, the two mentors uh, and chairs of the session, Jose Anta and Juan Pablo Rodriguez Sánchez. They are going to uh, manage the the session, they are going to uh, introduce uh, yourself, the different panelists, and later they control the uh, the coffee break and the uh, the round table about this interesting topic. So uh, when you want, uh, Jose and Juan Pablo, you can start with the with the first uh, author. Okay, thank you, Jose. Thank you very much for the introduction. So welcome everyone to the urban drainage session. Uh, Professor Jose Anta from Universidad da Coruña and I will be chairing this session. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo Rodriguez and uh, I'm a member of the Joint Committee on Urban Drainage, which is operated jointly by the International Association of Hydro Environment Engineering and Research and the International Water Association. We have nine posters for today's session. Uh, uh, remember that questions and answer session will be at the end of this session. So uh, please place your question to the presenters in the chat and we will um, uh, guide the discussion at the end of the session. The, the title of our third poster is an experimental study of sediment accumulation, erosion and transport processes in combined sewer system uh, presented by uh, Miguel uh, Regueiro Picayo from Universidad da Coruña. So Miguel, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you Juan Pablo for the introduction. Uh, I'm trying to share in my screen, but I don't know if you're going to uh, share my presentation because now I have uh, no permission. So I don't know what's mm -hmm. happening. Uh, it says a message, uh, okay. message for sharing is not available for me now. Manuel, can you please now, try again? Now. Yeah. Yeah, now. Perfect. I think now you can. Yes. Okay, it's correct, no? It, uh, you can see perfectly, of course. Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Manuel Regueiro. I am a researcher at the University of a Coruña in Spain. I'm going to talk about an experimental study of sediment accumulation, erosion, and transport processes in combined sequels, which is the title of this poster. Uh, what's happening? Uh, I think that is not my screen. No, sure. Try to share again. Now, now it's okay. Are you seeing, are you watching now the poster? No? Okay, so let's try again. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Now. Okay, so uh, as we already know, uh, sediment, uh, sewer sediments represent the main source of pollution in sewer systems to the receiving environment because under dry weather flow conditions, can be deposited in the bottom of the pipes and during rainfall episodes can be, easy, can be easily eroded and transported. To better understand these processes, an experimental campaign was carried out in a flume test facility placed in the wastewater treatment plant of A Coruña. This facility allows uh, different sewer pipe geometries to be tested under close to real conditions by supplying wastewater from the pretreatment plant. In this facility, we have developed new methodologies to characterize bed deposit in pipes, such as the structure from motion, which is a photogrammetric technique that we use to obtain the sediment bed morph morphology, and also the analysis of the chemical oxygen demand 
and the up oxygen uptake rate from the sediment samples in order to determine the sediment biodegradability and its influence on sediment transport. In the experimental campaign, we have performed accumulation and erosion and transport tests. In the accumulation test, we have obtained linear increases in the sediment heights during the first se seven and 10 days with accumulation rates range between 0.8 and 6.2 millimeters per day. And we have observed from sediment samples that parameters related with the organic matter decrease as the accumulation time increased. And on the other hand, in the erosion and transport test, we have observed bed forms in some of the erosion tests, which could be measured thanks to the structure from motion technique. We have reported that, that erosion test performed with freshly deposited sediments show a lower bed load transport threshold than those performed with consolidated bed deposits. As we have shown, as we have shown that capacity bed load transport formulas based on the organic sediment tests were consistent with, the, with our results if the eroded bed was higher than five millimeters. As main conclusions, we can highlight that it was important to take into account the accumulation time during dry weather flow conditions because of its relationship with the degradation of the organic matter. This sediment biodegradation provides an increase in the bed erosion resistance and cohesion and reduce the skewing capacity. Uh, we have also obtained that the formation of small bed forms or ripples influence the bed shear stress. And finally, we have noticed that the application of bed load transport capacity formulas in seaward pipes show a high uncertainty due to the relationship between biodegradability and bed shear stress and the limited availability of sediment, which is influenced by the existence of non erodible fixed beds. And it is, I finish. Thank you for your attention. And then we'll see if you have any questions at the, uh, the final of this session. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel, very much for your presentation. Thank, thank you for being on time. Uh, so um, please remind that any question to Manuel will be addressed at the end of the session. So please place your questions in the question and in, in the chat panel. And then at the end with uh, Professor Jose Anta, we will uh, address those questions and then Manuel will reply to them. So. Uh, the title of our next poster is Model Development and Sensitivity Analysis for Water Air Flow in a Closed Conduit Sewer Pipe, presented by Avinav Dixit from uh, Technik uh, Universitat Berlin. So, Avinav? Yep. Uh, wait a moment, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can everybody see my presentation? Uh, yeah. Yes, we can. See. Okay, so I'll continue. First of all, I would like to uh, thank everyone for giving me this opportunity to present on a topic. Uh, secondly, good afternoon, everyone. I'll start by saying uh, that my topic is CFD model development and sensitivity analysis for the airflow in closed conduit sewer pipe. I start by saying that biological corrosion of sewer networks and treatment plants constitutes a major problem for asset management, and it affects and results in a loss of billions of dollars every year. Hydrogen sulfide gas is a major contributor to the odor and corrosion occurring in the sewer networks. Hydrogen sulfide gas is formed by the breakdown of the organic matter in the sewer uh, system under anaerobic conditions. These effects have been magnified by the, by the changing use, uh, uh, changing in the pattern of use of water. There are more efficient ways of using water nowadays, therefore there's lesser water in the system. Uh, due to climate change, there are warmer temperatures and therefore this, uh, this process is somehow catalyzed. <clears throat> While designing the urban sewer systems, common practices, uh, practice is to design the, uh, design the system considering the transport of wastewater and the runoff water without giving any thought to the air phase in the system. Consequently, the airflow is generally uncontrolled, uh, potentially malodorous, and causes formation of corroding compounds during the transport of wastewater. For this purpose, a two-phase simulation model in, uh, using CFD is set up in, in the open source platform OpenFoam using the built-in solver Interfoam. 
to verify and analyze the air, uh, air, air water flow in the closed conduit rectangular pipe, which can deliver the groundwork for models for uh, future uh, sewer ventilation modeling. Our current case is uh, inherited by, uh, an uh, by the experimental works of Benson et al. Uh, it's a rectangular pipe of length 15 meters with a width of uh, 0.3 meters and the height of 0.26 uh, meters. Uh, the flow rate of water can be controlled and there are measure, uh, measurement uh, systems uh, operating in the, in the beginning of the pipe, in the middle of the pipe, and, and in the end of the pipe at different heights from the water level. Initially, turbulent, sol uh, turbulent solvers in open foam were used uh, with wall functions and friction coefficients. But due to these simulations being uh, a replication of the experimental work of Benson, the flow velocities and initial conditions cannot be changed. Due to this, at any given time, the air, uh, the volume of air present in the system was greater than the, uh, uh, the than the volume of water present in the system, and also the the induced velocity in the air phase due to water flow was so low that the uh, that the flow remained laminar. Therefore, using turbulent uh, uh, turbulent uh, solver somehow overcalculated the velocity in the air phase, which can be seen in figure number two in the poster. After plausibility tests, the model was subjected to sensitivity analysis based on the changing velocities and mesh, re mesh resolutions at the air-water interface. Because of the formulation of interfoam solver is based on sol uh, solving one set of Navier-Stokes equations with the phase describing by the indicator function. In, in our case, the two phases are treated as two immiscible fluids with changing fluid properties. So therefore, uh, in our case, we are not using friction, uh, friction coefficients as, uh, as an approach towards sens sensitivity analysis. It was found that changing the mesh uh, resolution after a certain amount of time didn't, did not uh, improve the results. Although there was a, a higher denser plot, which produced a more high definition result, but uh, there was no change in the, val uh, in the outcome, uh, in the simulated values, and they were almost the same as the experimental values. When changing the viscosities, uh, you can see in table number one, there were different uh, combination try for changing the viscosities of air and water. It was observed until unless that both the velocities were, uh, were same. So for example, the velocity was uh, of air, uh, viscosity of air was uh, the same as viscosity of water. Uh, there were some uh, major changes in the results. Apart from that, uh, you could see in uh, figure number four that there are no, uh, they're almost the same. Uh, after finishing the sensitivity analysis, uh, a root mean square error was calculated and it can be seen, although there are major changes in the velocity profile of air, RME, RMSE values uh, remain, uh, like they're, they're a lot lesser than expected. Finally, I would like to conclude that different sets of simulations were able to explain the impact of different factors on the model. Increasing the number of cells after a point of time had no impact on the results. Changing the uh, viscosities had a significant impact on the flow pattern, although our, uh, the root mean square error uh, was not significant. Uh, future uh, works will include developing a more formal and detailed sensitivity report by combining or coupling different factors. I would also like to bring to point that this is just the groundwork uh, laid for the future works in my project. Uh, my project basically, uh, uh, basically uh, concentrates on the uh, mass transfer and transport of H2S and O2 gas in the sewer system. So validating the hydraulical, uh, hydraulics uh, initially would uh, lay down a better groundwork for future results. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you. Avinav, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, any question uh, to Avinav? please place in the chat uh, panel and then will be addressed at the end of the session. The title of our next poster is Database and Graph-Based Analysis Using EPA SWMM for Urban Flood Modeling, presented by Martin Rios from National Institute for Water in Argentina and University of Buenos Aires. Uh, please, Martin, you can start. Okay, hello. Um, here's my... You can see the poster? Yes, we can see it. Great. 
Okay, well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I've been working on uh, this year on the database design and the graph-based analysis for the SUM urban modeling with the EPA SUM software. And as a context, uh, one-dimensional hydraulic and hydrological uh, models um, of an urban basin are not uh, suitable for short-term or, or real-time forecasting due to their high computational cost. On, and on the other hand, we have the surrogate models, which aim to increase their forecasting speed um, without a, um, a quality loss. So uh, in this work, we, we, we've been working on, on the design of, of, the, of models that try to, uh, by a graph-based approach, model a urban basin and trying to get uh, more uh, insights of how uh, the hydraulic system works and so to take uh, some action. For this objective, we follow the these steps. First, we we worked on a we we started on a previous work where an Argentine basin was calibrated. Uh, an Argentine, sorry, an Argentine model basin was calibrated and validated with observed data and social data, which gave us a very good starting point. So we we ran multiple simulations with observed and synthetic scenarios. We built a great data set. So we had to uh, structure the data set and store it for its usage and exploitation. So we, we designed and we, and we built uh, a relational database in PostgreSQL that uh, mainly consists in three main schemas, one for the precipitation series, another one for the EPA swim models, and that the last one for the, um, the results of the simulations. Uh, the source data, is uh, distributed in three files where each file uh, corresponds to uh, each of these schemas. And so, for example, the uh, a TXC file that contains the information of spatial and temporal variations of the precipitation series. And there one is an IMP file where uh, it contains information about the models, the EPA suite models, and an, an out file with the results of the simulations. This out file is a binary file. So uh, to access that file, uh, we had to use a, a package called uh, Zoom Toolbox that provides like an, an API to query that uh, binary file. So for the whole ETL process, we, we develop a script that uh, basically automates the extraction, pre-processing, and load of the, of the data in those three files for each simulation into the uh, database. Once the data is loaded in the, in the database, uh, a graph engine queries that database and is capable of, of building uh, graphs that contain all the information of the precipitation of the EPA swim model and of the results of the model. And also is capable uh, of building subgraphs for uh, subcatchments for any node at any time of uh, a simulation, as we can see on the on the on the figure in the poster, uh, those subgraphs not not only contain the information uh, that the EPA swim offers as a result, but also that information aggregated for that particular uh, subcatchment. For example, the uh, watershed associated to that node, or the imperious area, or the mean precipitation, or the mean slope of that watershed. Uh, that gave us uh, extra insights of to, to better under, understand how the the hydraulic system works on urban basins because subcatchments are not just uh, defined by by the terrain, but also by the interaction of uh, pluvial and hydrological phenomena that uh, takes place there. Uh, we believe that uh, the graph approach is 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 interesting as an alternative perspective because it managed to efficiently represent the complexity and the high dimensionality of the urban basins. Um, so uh, these uh, results um, support our main idea of, of building a surrogate model based on a graph neural network or a, a more simple or efficient uh, physics-based model, uh, which ran on top of a previously calibrated and validated EPA swim model. Thank you. Thank you, Martin, for your presentation. I would like to remind the audience 
that any question to Martin or any of the previous presenters can be uh, placed in the chat uh, panel. And then at the end of the session, and the, at the end of the session, we will uh, came back to your questions. The title of our next poster is Comprehensive Benefit Assessments of Green Infrastructure, presented by Kian Yu from a Research Center on, on Flood and Road Disaster Reduction of the Ministry of Water Resources in China and the China Institute of Water Resources and Hydropower Research. So please, Kian, you can start your presentation. Okay, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. How to share the screen? Okay. Oops. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry that I cannot use the virtual background, but I am also very happy to be here and show you my researches. And my name is Xian Yu. I am a senior engineer from China Institute of Water Resources and Hydropower Research, IWHR. Uh, today, my report is about comprehensive benefit assessments of green infrastructure. Well, as you may know that green infrastructure like GI, we call it in brief, is a kind of resilient solutions. They can not only control rainfall runoff volumes, but also improve the water quality of, uh, of the runoff. So in this study, we establish a comprehensive benefit assessment systems of five kinds of green infrastructure. And they are green roofs, well, what's wrong? Sorry. And they are green roofs, porous pavement, rainfall harvesting, and uh, bioswales. Uh, so the system is composed of 18 indicators, and these indicators are selected from four aspects. They are disaster reduction benefits, economic benefits, environmental benefits, and as well as social benefits. So we apply this system to the Jinan city, which is a sponge city construction pilot area in China. Uh, and the study area is about 39 square kilometers. Uh, and the three kinds of GI are designed in this study area. They are green roofs, second green belts, porous pavement. And according to the real conditions of this study area, we select four indicators to evaluate the comprehensive benefits of the GIs. And they are the reduces in addition area, reduces direct economic loss, increases groundwater recharge, and improve air quality. So you can see uh, a flood simulation numerical model and flood risk analysis software for us. And the flood damage assessment software developed by IWHR were adopted to simulate the comprehensive uh, benefits. Well, and the results show that both the inundation area reduction rates and the direct economic loss re uh, reduction rates decreases with the increase of the rainfall volumes. In addition, however, the groundwater recharge volumes increase with the increase of the rainfall volumes. Uh, in addition, the green roofs can reduce the nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and other pollutants. So you can find from these results that the GIs indeed bring us many uh, benefits. And in the future, we will uh, study how to uh, uh, evaluate each indicators and try to find a way to give a overall value of the comprehensive benefits. And that's all my report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dian, for your uh, presentation. So we will continue with the next poster, which is, which is entitled Computational Fluid Dynamics Study of the Biological Reactor of the Wastewater Treatment Plant of Roldan, Lo Ferro, and Balsicas, Spain, presented by Alicia Rosvernal from Universidad Politécnica de Cartagena. So Alicia, you can start now. Hi, um, I'm sharing the screen.
Can you see the poster? Yes, we can see it now. Okay, well, my name is Alicia from Universidad Politécnica de Cartagena, and I'm going to expose the research that that has by title Computational Free Dynamics a Study of the Biological Reactor of the Wastewater Treatment Plant of Roldan, Loferro, and Malsicas. The purpose of this study is to evaluate the hydrodynamic behavior of the biological reactor through computational free dynamics tools. For this, a three-dimensional numerical model has been developed in Flow 3D for the anaerobic chamber. Uh, figure one saw the geometry of the biological reactor and a front view of the um, anaerobic chamber. It has two bottom orifices that allow communication between the different um, chambers, and it has also one inlet. The main features of the model are, in the first place, that the structure mesh is used to define the computational domain, studying different mesh sizes, 0 0.6 meters, 0 0.5 meters, and 0 0.4 meters. In addition to nesting blocks with a mesh size of 0 0.1 meters, located in the bottom orifices and in the inlet. Regarding the boundary condition, in the inlet, a constant flow condition of 0 0.032 cubic meter per second is established, which is the design flow for each treatment line. And in the outlet, a hydrostatic pressure condition has been specified, taking into consideration the flow elevation at 5.49 meters. For the turbulence models, two types have been considered, the turbulence models K-Epsilon and the renormalization group K-Epsilon. Besides, the laminar flow behavior has been also analyzed. On the other hand, Two numerical probes, A and B, have been placed in each of the voto orifices to analyze the results, where the influence of the mech size and the turbulence model in the hydro retention time has been investigated. Uh, as seen in figure two, the reduction of the mech size tends to diminish the hydro retention time in the probe A and to increase it in the probe B. Uh, comparing the turbulence models, the RNGK epsilon tends to obtain the larger retention time in the outlet B, while the laminar flow case of, cases obtain the higher HRT for the finer messes in the probe A. It's important to highlight that the differences between the result obtained with the mech size of 0 0.5 meters and 0 0.4 meters are less than 5% in all the cases. As you can see in figure three, we saw the relative error with respect to the finite messes. Uh, finally, considering the figure four, Similar retention time distribution may be observed with the K epsilon and the RNG K epsilon model, with a large depth zone in the vicinity of the outlet B, due to the recirculation of the flow. Uh, in conclusion, studying the hydrodynamic of a biological reactor is essential to improve the efficiency of the purification process. However, the result need to be validated again measurement in a prototype or in a scale in a scale model. And this is the bibliography used, the studies of Hirton and Nicole and the Carspiña and Bridman. Thank you for your attention. Alicia, thank you very much for your presentation. I would like to Thank you and all the previous presenters for keeping the time during this session. We are perfect, perfectly on time and we will have uh, abundant time at the end of the session to discuss and to make you some questions. And um, so we will continue. Uh, the title of our next poster is Stochastic Modeling of Storm Precipitation Scenarios presented by Ivan Kuznetsov from Russian State Agrarian University. Ivan, you can start now. 
Hello. Hello, everyone. Do you see my poster? Yes, we can see it now. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my first, first let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Ivan Kuznetsov and I'm from Moscow, Russia. Currently, I'm studying for a master's degree at uh, Russian State Agrarian University. My academic advisor is Vitaly Ilinich. I'm very glad to be here today to talk um, to you about my work, which is titled Stochastic Modeling of Storm Precipitation Scenario. In principle, goal of my work is to model scenarios of maximum possible precipitation in Tuopse, a city in Russia, and uh, as I consequence, potential power of floods. This region uh, is exposed uh, to frequent floods. The novelty of the research teams uh, from the application of the stochastic modeling method to this region. Uh, the baseline data includes uh, 69 rains with total daily precipitation greater than 30 millimeter. You can see some examples for of the uh, rain scenario in the future one. Each rain has its own scenario and the proportion of the wool rainfall at each uh, hour can differ greatly. And uh, certainly, each rain matches value of probability in percent. Uh, but uh, it is not enough for us, as we want to find the uh, most infallible scenario, referring, uh, for example, to approximately um, 0.1 percent of potential precipitation. In uh, fact, such rains have not been observed yet. So uh, the only way for uh, for us is to model them. So uh, what we do? We generate uh, a series of random values of probability. We've used uh, 500 numbers from uh, 0.1 to 100%. Uh, and uh, this is the first application of the Monte Carlo method. Each uh, value of probability corresponds to the specific amount of precipitation. This is our artificially uh, increased series of observations. But without the next step, is that it does not have much value. And the next step, we model 500 rainfall patterns for 69 scenario. There, there is a simple way to put it. Just imagine uh, how the football players um, of two teams greet each uh, other before the match and each player uh, of the first team greets a random player of the second one. Uh, the modeled series of precipitation per hour was put under statistical processing. Uh, the modeled series was compared to observed series. Actually, we've compared the amount of precipitation per hour and the variation coefficient. The results are shown in tables one and two. Uh, after the analysis, we found out the differences have turned out to be quite small. This means uh, that the presented method can be used in precipitation runoff models to calculate the probability of dangerous floods. To sum up, we've managed to get uh, the possibility to detect the uh, most unfavorable rain and consequently to calculate the highest possible power of flooding. That brings me to the end of uh, my presentation. 
thank you for your attention. I am gladly answer any of your questions. Thank you very much, Ivan, for your presentation. And thank you also for keeping the time, the timing. Uh, we will continue and then we will come back to you at the end of the session for questions and discussions. Uh, the title of our next poster is Experimental Characterization of Permeable Pavement Using Simulated Rain, presented by Juan Naves from Universidad da Coruña. So, Juan, you can start now. Hey, thank you, Juan Pablo. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, my name is uh, Juan Naves. I'm from the University of Coruña. Spain YPM, and I would like to introduce you to our laboratory experimental work, where we want to analyze the long-term performance of permeable pavement. Well, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Can you uh, talk a little, a little bit high? Uh, because yeah, sure, we cannot sure. hear you very well. Yeah, so uh, permeable pavement. Now this is okay. Good girl. Okay, permeable pavements are among the most common sustainable urban drainage systems implemented on urban catchments, and the good performance has been already extensively demonstrated. Uh, however, there are still uh, an important uncertainty of how is the long term response of this type of solution against uh, clogging by surface sediments or other type of pollutants. So, in this study, we assess the impact of retrofitting and an impermeable concrete surface by comparing the drainage field hydrographs before and after installing a porous asphalt layer over a concrete surface. The experimental setup that you can see uh, in the first figure, part A, uh, consists of a full scale street section of 36 square meters uh, that uses a dripper basic rainfall simulator to generate three realistic and uh, uniform precipitation of 30, 50, and 80 millimeters per hour of rain intensity. Originally, uh, this facility had a concrete impervious surface where, uh, during my recent thesis, we carried out a series of high definition hydraulic, wash off, uh, and sediment transport uh, experiments. And now this surface has been covered uh, by deposing over it a permeable uh, asphalt. Uh, if you look at uh, figure two, uh, you can see the difference between the runoff uh, draining through the calipots of the facility for both setups, porous asphalt in green and impervious concrete in gray. In gray. And for the three rain intensities, uh, the results obtained uh, confirms and quantifies the benefit of permeable pavements and the beginning of its operational life reducing uh, by roughly 50% and delaying in more than three minutes the run of peak for the worst case study that, is, that in this case is the rain intensity of 80 millimeters per hour in the third plot uh, of the figure. Um, this first analysis was focused in the behavior of the porous asphalt when it is new and clean without uh, having added uh, any type of sediment. But we want now to focus on the removal efficiency of the porous asphalt. So we are studying how the retaining particles clog the permeable pavement, varying the removal efficiency and the hydrologic uh, results. To get that, we have uh, we have built um, <coughs> we have built a new rainfall simulator of one square meter. In figure one B, uh, you can see the rainfall simulator that we are currently improving and we are with, uh, installing a different type of sensor. And in this image, you can also see uh, four slabs of porous asphalt over the test surface. The objective is to study clogging uh, in this asphalt slab uh, first, using different sizes and types of sediment and different rain intensities as variables. Uh, finally, we will use everything we learn in this new facility to evaluate the long-term performance of the asphalt layer disposed of the seed at full scale, uh, hoping that the result will lead to more efficient uh, implementation and maintenance strategies. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Juan, for your presentation. We are um, missing two presentations, and then at the end of those, 
two presentations, we will start the, the discussion and we will address, we already have some questions in the chat panel. So I would like to remind, remind uh, everyone that any question to uh, Juan and any of the, of the previous presenters can be placed there and then we will uh, address them at the end of the session. The, the title of our next poster is Comparison of Urban Basin Application between GR4G and SWIM, presented by Jeon Kim from Seoul National University. Um, so, Hyeon, I'm sorry if, if I uh, mispronounced your name. You can start now. Can you see my poster? Yes, we can see it now. Can you please put it in full screen? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Hyunjuk Kim, Master Degree in Seoul National University in South Korea. It is the compare region of urban basin application between GR4J and SWIM. The impermeable area of the urban watershed will increase in the future because of the climate change and severe urbanization. It generates a high peak flow and an increase in surface runoff, which leads to urban flood damage. Therefore, we need to forecast and analyze runoff in the urban basin to manage this inevitable issue. The runoff results depend on the hydrological model used. Storm water management model, SWIM, is generally used when simulating the urban basin runoff. However, Snuka has the advantage of automated convenience, so GR4J and SWIM models were compared to make a more accurate urban basin prediction in Snuka. The runoff results of the two models were obtained using the RCP 4.5 KMA precipitation scenarios for the basin containing Bundanggu in South Korea from 2041 to 2070. Table 1 and Figure 1 shows the simulated runoff that exhibits a similar pattern between the two models. A slight difference between the two models is evident in figure two, which is the flow duration curve. In order to effectively evaluate the performance of the two models, comparing these simulations with monitoring data is needed. For simulations, rainfall observations from 2009 to 2015 for the same region were used. By comparing the runoff of the two models, Simulated from the observed rainfall to the field evidence, we can see that the SWIM has a value closer to the observed value as shown in table two. SWIM can set different characteristic values for each subcatchment and accurately analyze runoff in urban basins, but the characteristics of urban basins are not efficiently applied in the gr 4 model. Considering the increase in impermeable area, which is the main effect of urbanization, the percent impervious area among the subcatchment features of SWIM should be added as a parameter of GR4J. Applying the calibrated GR4J model to SNUKA is, is expected to be beneficial in representing the runoff of the urban runoff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jiangju, uh, for your presentation. And last but not least, the title of our final poster is Hydraulic Model of Stormwater Drain System Using Different Methods for Defining the Catchment Area, presented by Anna Lubcheva from St. Cyril and Methodus University. So, Anna, you can start now your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to uh, present my paperwork um, named Hydraulic Model of Stormwater Drainage System Using Different Methods for Defining the Catchment Area. I'm, I'm Anna Grupcheva. I come from North Macedonia. I studied at the Faculty of Civil Engineering in Skopje, North Macedonia. Uh, for 
I must say that the, the stormwater drain system is an infrastructure facility that accumulates the, the rainwater, protecting the urban areas from flooding. As an important parameter and as one of the base units for defining the, the stormwater uh, discharge are the catchment areas. For this purpose of the hydraulic analysis and hydraulic model, a hydraulic model was developed that will simulate the runoff conditions of the stormwater drainage system using the SWMM stormwater management model software package according to the two methods, the classical and the modern method. Uh, for the classical method, the catchment areas are, um, are defined uh, as the, with using the boundary conditions by the Thyssen polygon, or as we say, the roof symmetry of the links. And for the modern method, the catchment areas are generated by the topography of the terrain uh, with the main node of its slope, groundwater, and its use, uh, elevation, geometric change, embankments, etc. For these models, the return period for the rainfall data was uh, used for two years due to uh, the existing the existing stormwater uh, the existing stormwater system in uh, Ukrit, North Macedonia, because it was used for the actually existing stormwater system in North in, in Ukrit. On the first figure, you can see over here that uh, these are the catchment defined by the classical method. And on the second, you can see the catchment areas defined by the modern method. For the results, uh, there was made a comparison between the accuracy of the two analyses for, the bo for both of the methods. And we can see the difference in the flow rate of the links depending on the amount of water they receive from the catchment area using its, its hydrograms for uh, QD actually for flow time uh, graphs. And here you can see the pictures. The, the first pictures are the catchment defined by the classical method. And on the second part, they are the, uh, the catchment areas defined by the modern method. So um, I, I must say that on, uh, it was used the rational method for uh, calculating the uh, catchment area discharge. And I must say the C coefficient was was different for every catchment area. Actually, every catchment area was divided on sub-catchment areas where, where they had a different C coefficients for the rational method. As a conclusion, I must say, uh, we, uh, when analyzing a stormwater system, the modern method, it is said to be better for upstream parts because they allow optimization of the pipe diameter due to its peak flows. Uh, with the help of diametric optimization, lower economic costs of current projects would be obtained. In the case of the intermediate and downstream link parts of the stormwater drainage system, it can be said that both of the classical and modern methods are, are suitable for the use of the catchment area definitions as the difference in the hydrograms is minimal. These recommendations will apply to urban predominant plain areas. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Anna, for your presentation. And uh, you were, was the last uh, paper in this session. So I would like to congratulate all the presenters, Manuel, Avinav, Martin, Kian, Alicia, Ivan, Juan, Pyongju, and Anna for their very interesting and professional presentations and for keeping good timing during the session. Uh, I would like to ask Professor Jose Anta to present himself before starting the question and answer session. So Jose, do you want to say something? Uh, before we start. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, uh, Juan Pablo. Yes, uh, yes, I, I would like to briefly present myself. Uh, I am Jose Anta. I am a senior lecturer uh, from the University of A Coruña. Uh, I work in urban drainage. Uh, and as uh, Juan Pablo mentioned before, uh, I am a member of the Joint Committee on Urban Drainage. Um, and I think that maybe we can just start with the different questions. Till now, we have, uh, I would say, two questions. So maybe uh, we can start with the first one, uh, which is uh, from Daval Pandya, and uh, um, state that if uh, rainwater harvesting at the individual level uh, can help to reduce the usage of foil of fossil fuel and nuclear items from power generations. I don't really uh, don't know uh, how to assign this question. Maybe uh, to um, to 
to Kian Jom uh, because she presented something related with green infrastructure. So we have here the rainwater harvesting in some way. So maybe uh, Kian Jom, I don't know if you have some uh, comment about this question or maybe Dabal uh, can also try to reformulate or uh, explain better this, this question. Yeah, so if, if any of the other presenters want to address those questions, you are welcome to do so. It's about uh, how rainwater harvesting can help in reducing fossil fuels usage in terms of power generations. And uh, complemented what Jose said, there, there, there were two uh, questions that were already uh, addressed by the authors, by Avinav and uh, Manuel. Uh, the, 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 the answers are in the question and answer panel, but yeah. if Avinav and Manuel want to explain more in detail their responses, you can, you can do it uh, now if you want. So probably we can start with uh, Abinaf. Ah, sorry, 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 from Pablo. Uh, I think that I can extend the, the answer to uh, Mik, uh, Mika. Oh, yeah, perfect. So, oh, Manel, go ahead. He, he asked me about uh, if in our experimental campaigns we use uh, co co cohesive sediments uh, obtained from the um, from the wastewater treatment plant, and yes, it's it's true. The, we use the wastewater uh, uh, taken directly from the uh, pre-treatment uh, facility of the wastewater treatment plant. And then he or she, I don't know, <laughs> asked me about the the composition for the in the shear stress. And yes, we we measure uh, or we account this effect of the of the the composition of the bed shear stress, and I highlight the my thesis the, where is uh, where can access or on the the last uh, paper that we published about this uh, this thing. And he uh, he or she also uh, talk about if we can uh, use this study and compare with. Uh, other fluvial sediment transport formulas, and uh, in this case, we in the reference, the reference, and all the like, bibliography that we check, uh, we just take uh, some examples of formulas uh, related with fluvial sediment transport, but applied for um, uh, sewer pipes and. Some of them were uh, uh, developed for uh, cohes cohesive uh, sediments, and those uh, formulas uh, were the, have the best uh, the best fit for to our to our results. And I think that with this, I can uh, complete my my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel, for your for your answer. I think. Uh, Mika, who made that question to you, raised uh, his hand. And also Daval, who made the first question we, we addressed, is also raising uh, the hand. So I'm not sure uh, how to, okay. Any of you can um, complement uh, your questions and then continue the discussion. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I wanted to follow up. I'm Micah. Um, so yeah, I appreciate your uh, comments, Manuel. And I was looking at your, um, the paper that you cited. Um, it is an interesting work. Uh, I guess one last follow up question you you note about um, the effects of consolidation. Um, and I was wondering if you could kind of expand a little bit on 
um, essentially what you found as far as what effects consolidation has uh, on erosion? Uh, yes, the, the main conclusion that we found in this study was uh, related that uh, once the, the, the consolidation of the sediment in the, in the sewer pipe uh, grows, and the, 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 we, we found that in the analysis of the sediment samples, uh, we found a degradation of the organic matter, and it was and also uh, when we performed the erosion and scoring tests, we found that uh, uh, with the same conditions, if we perform tests with a uh, higher time of consolidation, the erosion and the, the transport of sediments was fewer than if the sediment was freshly deposited in the pipe during the first days that we found uh, with, the, with the same hydraulic conditions, a higher uh, transport. So the consol consolidation of the sediment and the co this cohesion of the bed deposits was uh, it's a really important, what we found that it's a really important uh, parameter to take account to these uh, same transport uh, models. Yeah, I appreciate the, the comment. I'm, I'm more familiar with fluvial systems and um, kind of even in estuaries and consolidation is a big problem. So I'm glad you're addressing it uh, kind of at that level too with wastewater treatment. Yeah, so we thanks for your answer. We found difference with in, uh, sediments with a higher inorganic fraction. In our case, was uh, more uh, organic and co cohesive. And in fact, the, the, these ripples that I uh, talk about were uh, little small, uh, and were a, a small, and in experiments with uh, less organic um, or inorganic sediments, we found that. Uh, this uh, performed by other authors, we found that these uh, bed forms were uh, bigger uh, with dunes and stuff like that. Okay, thank, thank you very much for your question, Mika. Okay, thank you very much, Mika, for your question and Manuel for addressing it. Um, uh, Daval, if you want to speak up and, and then tell us about your question and if any of the presenters or um, want to address it, you are welcome to do so. Hello. Can anyone yeah, hear hello. me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Actually, my question was, if individual households do rainwater harvesting and rainwater management properly in urban and rural areas, in farmlands, okay, then they can conserve water for their usage. And the load of water supply from say dams of the uh, country or state or city can be reduced and that water can be used for hydraulic power generation. And hydraulic power plants can generate say <clears throat> less polluted energy. So we can contribute in say reducing greenhouse gases by increasing hydraulic power generation. That was my question. If an individual household do rainwater harvesting, we can increase hydraulic power generation in re, uh, through rivers and other uh, water bodies. Okay, thank you very much, Daval, for your question. Uh, I would like to ask our presenters, Manuel, Abinav, Martin, Kian, Alicia, Ivan, Juan, Zhengju and Anna, if any of you wants to address that, that question in a, in a general aspect. Uh, I actually volunteered for one year in uh, rainwater harvesting in India. Uh, the problem with uh, rainwater harvesting is it's, it's a really simple system, but it doesn't end there. Uh, you need to take proper care. There's a, there's a huge amount of construction involved. You need to have proper uh, water budgeting so in the end, I'll say, uh, like, it seems on paper really nice idea to have rainwater harvesting for personal use and like watering your lawn or using it as a cleaning water, but you know the pollution index in India. 
the first flush has to be removed the second flush has to go to the sewer system and then you have many other factors you cannot just get the rain in a tank and then you can use it so i'll say that in the end it's not just that easy that this getting rainwater and using it i hope i can clear May some I part of the question yeah again level Yeah, you can if you have further questions uh, you can uh, abinav i wanted to ask what if we divert the rain water after proper filtration to the bore wells of existing bore wells active bore wells or bore wells which are stuck the thing is uh, you you see the yes. amount of pollution in india right now in india and uh, literally there was a festival and yesterday uh, i live in lucknow and the whole city was yellow with pollutants yes so and and then it rained yesterday in lucknow so you do you even imagine the amount of uh, sulfur and other greenhouse and gases inside this rainwater this water is highly acidic so just uh, filtering it and putting it in a borewell will contaminate your aquifer as well so this okay. um, uh, i mean it's a fine solution if you have proper technology but the thing is if the technology costs you more then saving fossil fuel why would you implement that you need a solution which actually saves fossil fuel and does not impose other impacts on the environment okay on paper what you're saying is completely correct you can use rainwater and you'll have more energy but the thing is it doesn't work that way you will be impacting the aquifer and no matter how even if you use that water for uh, fertilization uh, sorry uh, yeah fertilization yeah for your lawn and uh, and stuff and irrigation purposes but the thing is this water goes into the ground and if you have a lot of acidic water first of all you'll destroy the land for future vegetation and of course you'll contaminate the aquifer which in turn is worse because you you we indians at at least indians use a lot of ground water for drinking okay abhishek actually i belong to gujarat mm -hmm. okay and here uh, i can say yeah, yeah, the it's a semi arid region and i know you have less rainfall it's really hard here but yeah yeah but uh, in gujarat uh, say in matter of say pollution air pollution in comparison with delhi and lucknow we have lesser a bit lesser not much but bit lesser and we, mm -hmm. if we check the tds of rain water it comes around uh, hardly 150 ppm yeah but then drinking water is less than i think green in india drinking water uh, supplied by the local municipal bodies are around 200 Okay, I'll check into that. I don't know the uh, the, the limits. Okay, in India. So uh, what? Uh, actually, I am also a rainwater harvesting professional in mm -hmm. Gujarat. So what I was suggesting to governments and uh, bodies, uh, the NGOs and everyone, that if we can do rainwater harvesting at individual level, we can reduce the salinity of groundwater table first of all. okay and then if uh, people are using that water for at least say flushing the toilet or uh, <coughs> such use as a car wash like that okay so you and want to use this water for secondary uh, purposes hello yes tell me abhi now no i'm just saying you just want to use this water for secondary purposes not like primary purpose is like drinking or drinking uh, but only uh, we can use it for irrigation we can use it for uh, say secondary usages mm -hmm. okay so the water supply from dams of the, for example in gujarat we have sardar sarovar the one of the largest dam in india right and uh, it it has a great uh, say hydraulic power plant capacity there right mm -hmm. we can uh, build few more dams for just hydraulic power generation and reduce uh, say thermal power uh, power uh, power plants so that emission of car, okay, uh, if... gases emission of greenhouse gases can be reduced okay if this is completely a fair point what if i suggest can you can you hear me yeah tell me please so do you know that construction of a dam causes a lot of harm to the environment i mean you exactly. completely destroy the ecosystem of a like a river completely and it takes mm. years and years to redevelop right with the amount of sun you have in gujarat why don't you use pv i think that's a better solution and there are pvs with efficiency right now more than 30% uh, 
so if for for the amount of sunlight you get in gujarat you don't, don't even need to use a fossil fuel for generating electricity <clears throat> uh, as it is a industrial hub of the nation the yeah. electric sub- electricity supply is always a concern okay so even uh, we all are opting for solar power generation we are installing solar power panels on our rooftops these days even government is uh, providing subsidies for installation of uh, solar panels on our terraces yeah okay but the industrialization of the state is such that the power generation is always less than the requirement mm-hmm. okay and for that government is running so many power projects uh, thermal power nuclear power and harming the environment so as an option comparatively thermal power plant and nuclear power plant doing more pollution than any hydraulic power plants so that way we can contribute lesser in greenhouse gases emission that is the way and uh, vision which i am presenting okay okay oh, perfect thank you very much daval for your question and having up for having this interesting uh, discussion uh well to wrap up the session i mean to i mean probably to to foster the discussion in in general terms we had a presentation from different countries diverse conditions but really common needs across uh, the case studies we had studies on sediments odor control flood modeling green infrastructure wastewater treatment plant modeling rainfall analysis permeable pavements hydraulic modeling we had experimental studies modeling benefit assessments and so on and this is uh, how rich the panorama for urban drainage is uh, is now uh, i would like to ask uh, the presenters uh, how your results can be used in in practical applications i mean if you want to translate this to to uh, engineers working in in the water utility the local water utility how would your results can be useful and used now for practical decisions i i'm, I'm not sure if if you want to to comment on that It, this is an open question to everyone to all the presenters uh i'm i'm really sorry one can you please repeat the last part because uh, something happened with my network i couldn't hear just the last part of your question Abina uh, Juan Pablo uh, state that uh, how your research in general can be applied uh, as a practitioner uh, of, of, of from the practitioner point of view I, I think for instance in your case you presented a, a, a study about modeling of uh, sulfidric in or the previous step of this uh, uh, modeling of uh, sulfidric in in in, in <clears throat> sorry in drainage systems and this is clearly linked with the corrosion processes of of the network so maybe this could be uh, the starting point of uh, the application uh, for the practitioners yeah so for application purposes i would like to say that uh, the major problem is h2s and o2 so we are trying to once this uh, solver is ready we can uh, we can try simulating large large scale uh, large scale pipes and uh, real natural systems in that case we'll know the exact point where we can use uh, different measures to extract h2s and o2 without causing harm to anybody and and the server network like uh, the last phase of my phd is really concentrating on the chemical stripping uh, of uh, mm-hmm. h2s and also natural degasification so we'll try to include uh, Uh, different weirs or uh, uh, increase the turbulence in the water phase to uh, uh, strip the h2s uh, strip h2s naturally and then we have less hazardous uh, conditions all throughout the pipe and for this purpose i'm like uh, i'm really grateful that i joined the this conference because manuel is working on what i want to work later because when we introduce these uh, natural degassing systems like a drop structure or something in a cyber network we cause a lot of sediment tra- uh, we hinder a lot of sediment transport in the system 
So there's a lot of accum accumulation of sediments behind uh, these weirs or block mm -hmm. blocks. So yeah, I'll, I'll stay in touch with Manuel and let's see how this progresses when it comes to numerical modeling. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Avinav, for your for your answer. Anyone, any more one want to comment on that question? The practical application of your research and your results. Okay, I would like to comment on my part. Uh, due to this analysis for this hydraulic model, I must say that in practical uses, you can use one of those methods for uh, making a pipe diameter optimization, like using a less diameter in the upstream links and using um, a bigger diameter and everything else in the stormwater drainage system for the downstream links and intermediate links. So you can have some practical uh, use from this actually paper from mine. Okay, thank you, Anna, for your comment. Yeah, and do you see any links with the, the research that other of your colleagues are, are doing? Uh, with actually, I saw some links with the, about the precipitation and about the Python and SWMM. I can't remember who was it with the yes. with, with that disease. And yes. actually, because in my country, I must no. say that we don't have that much uh, data about uh, precipitation and rainfall. So if I use like, uh, exactly like his method for Python and for everything else, we can generate an experiment. We get the rainfall data for the next years, like for 25 year precipitation data, data or everything else. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. Anyone else what, want to comment and to highlight the links with the other presenters I and mean, in potential collaborations and synergies that can be uh, starting? Okay, I, 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 okay. I, I, I have quite a lot of questions, but instead of asking, I, I just want to uh, uh, okay, um, make a comment about all the research that you are developing right now. And it's uh, some kind of suggestion of uh, try to use uh, as much as you can uh, open data and try to uh, give all the research to other uh, researchers uh, using this uh, open source uh, repository like Zenodo or even GitHub if you have code or scripts that you want to share. And uh, also it's also interesting to explore the possibility of uh, publishing your data in some kind of open journals of data. You don't need a lot of analysis of, of your results just to put all the data uh, really well organized. And then with this data, uh, other researchers can use uh, your uh, experimental data, for instance, to validate their, their models. And here, uh, for instance, but this is related uh, with experimental data, but also with, uh, with the scripts, um, codes that you write. Uh, for instance, Martin show us uh, this uh, uh, analysis of uh, linking with Python, the swing with uh, a database, and then uh, manage this big data set to uh, run some kind of uh, aggregate model. So uh, I think it's really interesting to, if you can uh, sh um, share this kind of scripts to other researchers. Uh, it, it is interesting because there are several different uh, uh, applications for SWIN, for instance, to manage uh, data from QGs, um, uh, to manage data from these binary files. And at the end, I think it's interesting to have like two or three uh, big uh, or uh, scripts that are useful for everybody. And this is also could be a, an outcome from your research, not just the model, which is interesting for sure, but you can share this methodology 
to others and then others can use it. Uh, yes, sure. Um, I'm going to post now in the in the chat. I have my code. It's not uh, so tidy and not so well documented yet. But the idea is to advance in that direction. So uh, in, the, well, in the in the chat, here is the, the GitHub. Can you forecast? Mm -hmm. And I am going. I will keep updating with advances. In the in the in the poster is uh, in the figure where I show like the the workflow. You can see in green uh, what is al already finished, and yellow what, uh, what we are working on. That is a, a dashboard for operational daily tasks and to support some some decisions and uh, the the graph neural network model that is like the the most uh, challenging objective we, we have. Okay, thanks, Martin. Martin, thank you very much for sharing the link, but can I suggest, suggest you to put the link in the Q&A box instead of the chat? Oh, because yes. for the chat, we, we only have access to the, the presenters and the panelists, but not all the, all the, all the audience. Uh, I don't know how to... I can't uh, like uh, open a, uh, uh, a a question in the open Q and I. Just answer previous questions. I don't know how to. Hello. Okay. I think uh, I change to, to to all the the audience. Okay. Thank you, Jose. Yes. Very useful for anyone interested in in, in Martin's um, well scripts and uh, his research. Well, Jose, do you have any more comments or questions for the presenters? No, no, from my side, I think it's okay. Okay. Is any of the presenters uh, uh, having any comment uh, answer to the previous questions? We already heard uh, Manuel, Abinath, Martin, but and uh, Anna, but probably Kian, Alicia, Ivan, Juan, He, Geo, Jung, Jung. It seems that there are not any more questions. So I would like to thank uh, Jose for uh, co-sharing with me this session and uh, to Jose Carrillo also for helping us uh, uh, to, to have this nice session. And of course, thank you for all the presenters for the, the nice work and, uh, and the discussion. So Jose, I, I'm not sure if you want to say something before we end. No, I think uh, yes. Uh, again, I, I, I congratulate to the to the different presenters and also thanks to Jose Maria and all the people of the organizing committee who is working really hard in the last uh, I don't know months, but especially these last days. So thanks for for working in this because I think it's a really interesting uh, congress and uh, for all the people for the young people, not like me. Uh, <laughs> so thanks, thanks again. Thank you very much uh, to all of you for the, your interesting presentation, for your uh, work as a, as a chair for Juan Pablo and Jose, and also from, uh, for all the audience. I think that it was a, a really interesting topic, this, uh, this session of uh, Urban Drainage. And uh, right now we have 10 minutes uh, to, to do the break and later we can continue in um, room number one in the, in the other room to the uh, water resource management uh, session. So uh, thank you for, for all and uh, we continue during the, the Congress. See you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.
थैंक यू बाय बाय